Well, today is kind of a weird day. Um, I'm here working on this 2009 CLS 63 Mercedes, and uh, I got a phone call from my buddy who owns the car uh, that they were repairing his roof or doing something with the, the shutters or I don't know what was going on, but they were using bleach for whatever they were cleaning. And what happens is they forgot to close the door and obviously, uh, or uh, the wind came and basically covered the front of the car with bleach. So I'd be honest with you, I have never seen that before or heard of anything. So I said, yeah, absolutely, I, uh, I would come over. The backstory to this is I put ammo skin, I did a whole detail or whatever, but I put ammo skin on this, as you can see a little bit of ammo skin on here now. Uh, I put ammo skin on it about 10, 12 days ago, um, just for its regular winter, um, pre-winter cleaning. So, you know, he, he called me back and said, well, what are we gonna do? I took some pictures. Um, I didn't do a lot of film because there's people, construction going on and actually the guys are still here. So I don't wanna make it any more awkward than it is, um, but they went on lunch or whatever. So, um, yeah, the, I have pictures and I'll splice them into the video. They're basically what happens is the, the bleach kind of penetrated through and my, and my fear was that it penetrated through the clear coat but what it actually did was started to penetrate through the ammo skin, which is exactly what you want. Uh, you want the damage to be absorbed or, or protected, if you will, um, by the ammo skin. So I'm very, very happy. Um, unfortunately, I didn't take more video because like I said, it was kind of super awkward to be here taking video of the damage that they, they caused. But um, again, I'll shoot this, I'll pull it in a little bit. Right now I put ammo skin on and I'm letting it, um, I'm letting it cure for a little bit longer because I want to make sure that the, the, protect, the protection is there. But I'm stoked that, um, that it protected it. I, I, I had no idea. I mean, who, you know, you don't come up with something like, hey, let's test for bleach. Um, but, but it did work. Again, I'll show you the pictures. I'll show you the afterwards. Um, hopefully, um, hopefully I can do it on video and not just uh, pictures. But anyways, short, quick video. I don't know. I thought I would take you along. This is, uh, this is the first time I've ever had a vehicle that's had um, the mist of um, of bleach on a black car, and he's spazzing out. This is a three thousand dollar upgrade, um, special metallic something paint. So, anyways, uh, I'm going to take the ammo skin off, and I, I'm I'm today's a good day. Ammo skin worked and protected against uh, against bleach, and the the skin actually wore away, and not the clear coat. That's exactly what you want. That's why you wear, you know, protective clothing when you're driving a motorcycle or whatever. You're like you, you want the the leather to go away, not not the skin. So. Um, Ironically, on this one, you want the skin to go away, not the clear coat. You guys get my point. Anyways, I'll pull the camera in and uh, take a look at it. But So the ammo skin is off, uh, obviously. Uh, I've taken it off with a microfiber towel and clearly it looks spectacular. What I've learned today is that ammo skin, um, in fact, is really, really strong. And of course, I put it up against tons of different tests and things like that, but obviously I would never test bleach. That would just never cross my mind. Um, and again, the little mist of bleach, it worked. I'm, again, I'm super, super happy. But what, what I wanna make sure it comes across on these, in all of my videos, is that there's a point to, uh, you know, to what we're doing. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about something that's slightly off topic, but kind of on topic. And that's the difference between paint sealant. You don't, don't even worry about mine. Just sealant out there versus carnauba wax. Again, don't even worry about mine, just carnauba waxes versus sealants. Now I've written a bunch of articles and we've talked about it. Uh, a ton of different times uh, and the difference between sealant is remember it is it's synthetic meaning it's man-made meaning it's made in a formula room in a chemical room people in in suits that type of thing in, in uh, uh, chemistry suits so think of it as being chemically engineered to be very uh, protection oriented does that make sense so the focus at least my focus when I'm making mine is that protection is the number one key. I don't, I'm not terribly concerned about how easy it is to take off. Yes, it's important, but it's on the lower end of the, the totem pole. And I'm not terribly concerned about how shiny it is afterwards. Now, as soon as you start making everything easy to take off, easy to put on, super shiny, uh, super protecting, those things just don't make sense to me. You can't, you can't have all of the greatest things in the world. Just think about it. Uh, maybe like a bazooka is the strongest, you know, uh, you know, handheld weapon ever, but it's not the lightest. It's not the easiest to use. It's not this. It's not. You can't make a bazooka into a little tiny hand. Things. It just doesn't make sense. Hopefully, that's that's resonating with you guys. And I always try to make um, you know particular points to these videos so that at the end of them you go like, oh, I, I get what he was getting at. So synthetic wax, 
uh, or synthetic um, sealant, excuse me, uh, is, is made in my view, in the way that I make my products, I want protection as the number one thing. Now, number two thing is, and this is what took forever, is the fact that I needed it to work with the carnauba wax, which is the shiny stuff we'll talk about in a second. But the two layers need to work together. So in the past, car, uh, carnauba wax and sealants, when you put them together, meaning on top of each other, they didn't work out. It got blurry and nasty and, and kind of hazy, and it just didn't look good. So the key to mine is I wanted crazy amount of protection, which I feel like I kind of proved today. I'm, I'm, I'm stoked. Today's a, today's a success. Um, and I wanted it to work with the carnauba wax that was put on top of it, no haze. Okay, so that's the sealant. Now when we go to carnauba wax, and you see in the little jars in the, in the you know, it usually comes in a paste, which is a, a stronger form. Um, carnauba is, is a, a type of plant that's generally found in Brazil. That's why Brazilian carnauba wax. Um, think about it, it comes from a tree. It's organic, it's not synthetic, it's organic. Organic means comes from the earth. So th think about this. Remember when I, in one of the videos, I shot the uh, thermometer at the, at the paint, and it was, um, I forget what video it was, but maybe I did it in a demo. If you leave this in the sun, it gets up to 140, 150, 160, 200 degrees, depending on how long it's in the sun and the color, of course. Anything more than 100, I can't really work on it because the products flash too fast. So think of it this way. There's, there's a reason why I'm saying this. If it comes from the earth, imagine the temperature being 160 degrees, meaning right now, if it was 160 degrees, I would burst into flames or whatever. I, I couldn't survive. And carnauba wax comes from a tree which is living. It, it, it can only sustain so much. So what that wax does on the leaf of the carnauba tree is it protects it from the UV rays and all those, all those things, but to a particular point. Does that make sense? If it got up to 160 or 200 degrees on Earth, I'm telling you right now, the trees wouldn't be able to survive because that's just how organisms work or whatever. So one is manufactured with, uh, with chemistry in mind, meaning we can manipulate and do everything we can do in a test tube type, type setting, if you get my, my gist there, in a, in, a, in a beaker, versus carnauba wax, which basically just comes from the Earth. So there's limitations. So the point of the story is you put sealant on first, which is strong, tough, that we engineered to be that way. And then the trick is to make sure that it works with the soft, the beautiful carnauba wax. That's only gonna get you so much protection. So the way that I did it is I wanted a thousand percent shine with my carnauba wax. So you can tweak things here and there. And I didn't really care about protection. Yes, it protects a little bit here and there, great. But I don't really care about protection because I have the sealant underneath. So the combination of the two of them the layering effect, that's what separates these cars um, in terms of their protection and look. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, and I think, you know, when I do a lot of demos and I talk to people at car shows and things and I start to describe the difference between the two of them and it's like, you know, kind of a light bulb goes off and goes, oh, I didn't realize that. Um, so going further, one step further into this is, you know, after I put the sealant on, which I had, and luckily we did that and it protect, you know, against this particular situation, every little while. I mean, you can do it every day. I, I, you know, it's up to you. If you have a show car and you drive it every day and you, and you want something to relax, which I think waxing your car is very relaxing, but that's a whole other story for a different day. Um, you can put carnauba wax every single day if you want to and just keep adding and adding and adding. And it's fun and it'll make the car look shiny. Is it going to protect it like crazy? Eh, not particularly. Ammo? Uh, I, that's not my focus. That, that's, that's my response to that. It's not my focus. Does it protect? Yeah, of course it protects a little bit here and there. But it's not going to last very long. Why? Because it's organic. It comes from the earth. There's only so much that the sun can protect against. Again, remember, temperature-wise, uh, waxes are usually, you know, can protect 150 to 170, 180 uh, degrees before there's a burn-off rate. Synthetic meaning the sealants, they go closer to 300. Why? Because it's engineered to be that way. So we've, we've you know, repetition, repetition, repetition. I, I keep trying to pound this through. So hopefully that makes a little sense. So to cap this all off, um, I'm feeling pretty good about my statements because um, this car is protected or was protected. The unfortunate, you know, mist or whatever, and we saw the little dots. I'll try to um, put those pictures in this video. Um, and then I, I cleaned it off. I clayed it. I forgot to tell you that. I clayed it just to make sure to take anything off. I, I wasn't really sure, to be perfectly honest with you. I'd never cleaned a car that's got bleached before. Um, and this particular one with this fancier, uh, you know, upgraded paint job uh, worked. And I believe it worked because of the sealant and then the wax that I had on top of it. Those were, those are throwaways. Those are, 
Uh, they took the impact of the damage. That's exactly what you want. You want to protect that clear coat. Anyways, I can go on and on, and I know most of you who have uh, seen me at car shows, I can go all day about this stuff. I'm a super nerd, but I'm excited. Have any questions about that? The point of the story is, think about the difference between synthetic and carnauba, so sealant versus carnauba, what the differences are, and then remember, I've designed it so that they work together. Not all of them work together nicely. They, otherwise, they get hazy and, and nasty. So that was the kind of the trick be, behind everything. Sealant, protection. Carnuba wax, shine. That's it for me, guys. I'll talk to you soon. Any questions, shoot me an email, larry at ammonyc.com. Um, and uh, I'll be talking to you guys soon. Have a good one.